Uh, my work is organized along two main streams of work. The first one was more three-dimensional, and the second one was two-dimensional, and then I sort of combined them towards the end. So I started using, uh, thinking about color. So my first one was this one, um, and so where I started thinking about uh, interactions between colors. So the interactions that I'm looking at here are so what happened was I was drawing this and it was way too green and it wasn't realistic at all. It wasn't working because I just I saw a green plant and I started drawing it green. Um, and I realized, well, I should put more color in there. So I started to put, I made the ground blue. And then I thought, well, what would happen? How can I make this pop? So you put, I put orange along the edges uh, sort of as complementary color to contrast it with the blue and that sort of opened up a whole world to me so I put you know purple against the yellow and then blue and the orange uh, green and some red and from there I started working I started looking at uh, Wayne Thiebaud who's a West Coast artist um, and how he uses color and how he applies paint um, which I could talk for a whole day about but I'm not going to but that was so I was influenced by Wayne Thiebaud to do these cheese pieces. Um, so this was my first one, and this was my second one. I think this one's the most interesting because I did it. I drew this cheese on a white plate. Um, and so thinking about how can I depict this plate as white uh, using only color, because that's what I was doing, I was using chalk pastel. And I, you know, if you, if I just left it white, it wouldn't work at all, it wouldn't read. Um, and I think it does read as white, you have to either look at it for a little bit or just sort of glance at it and not look at it at all. Um, but taking that idea of depicting things as white using only color, um, I started to work with that. So we're going to go back this way again because my work is not very chronological. But so here this was my main sort of experiment with white using color. So this, I drew this white chest of drawers using chalk pastel. Um, and how do these colors interact? So again, there's this, um, there's this blue and orange, uh, blue and orange, and then other color interactions. Um, but it wasn't quite working. It's it's very complicated. Like this one, it's you know it's just sort of like a very because obviously there are a lot of colors on there, so they you can see it as one way or you could see it as white or not. Um, and so what I realized was I had to put in local color. Uh, meaning I had to put in not just a white object that I was drawing, but also um, objects with color to give myself a reference point. So that's what this one was, where I put in this blue um, book. And that was my reference point to start using yellows and oranges in comparison or in contrast with that blue to build those color relationships with um, complementary colors. And then from there, um, I got to these... Uh, flower pieces. So what attracted me to them was, was that they have these, I think they're daisies, but I don't know. I'm not a flower expert. Um, okay, thank you. They're daisies. Um, and so they had white flowers in there, so I thought, how can I depict these flowers as white? But also they have lots of green and very vivid, you know, colors other than white. And so uh, I started to do these drawings. Then I looked at uh, impressionist painters, especially Van Gogh, um, an artist, a uh, Danish artist named Emil Nolde. Um, to look at how they applied paint and how they layer um, color. So, and if you look closely, there are colors that wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily associate with a green, you know, bunch of leaves or a wreath or something. So, if you look closely, there's um, this flower, this leaf, especially. There's lots of red in there, and there's lots of orange in there too. And so, building those relationships with between the green and the the red, and then the other colors. Um, especially influenced by Van Gogh, um, led me to my uh, Snapchat drawings, which are over here. So these, um, these are done using Snapchat, which was a pretty integral part of the entire process. You're working with the limitations of the medium, because Snapchat's not a very sophisticated drawing tool, and the screen isn't very big. Um, and they compress the images when you send them, so the quality just gets very poor. Um, on the top, you can see the progression of my first one to my last one. So this is where my thinking sort of changed about how am I using color. My last piece was this one. I, s I started with the drawing. It was a study for 
uh, what I wanted to do previously was I wanted to draw a white object and then paint the colors that I used to draw it onto the object itself. Does that make sense? Because I say that a lot and people don't get what I mean. Um, and so this was a study for that. So I painted this first, or I drew this with chalk pastel first, and then I painted those colors onto the actual object. And what I realized was, in sort of a similar way to how um, you can view my obelisk pieces from sort of one place, and if you view them from another spot, they, they change and they don't quite work. Um, that's the same thing in trying to paint this particular scene onto an actual three-dimensional object that's viewable from all angles. So if you view it from about here, it should work, where it should sort of like click into focus, where this reflection sort of makes sense with the angles that you see from that spot of this, and then this sort of, this sort of reflection works with where the bottle is. But the interesting part to me is that it doesn't work at all from anywhere else that you view it. Um, and that's sort of an idea of that is throughout my work of like viewing things differently from 3D to 2D or from the eye, whereas, or from the eye compared to the camera, um, and how things work in one way, and then what's the reality and what's not, essentially.